everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this neck warmer that you can see Melva wearing here. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to catch you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Okay, so to make this neck warmer you'll need some yarn and I'm going to recommend that you use something similar to what I'm using here. So a chunky weight yarn. This is probably about a six weight and I'm using a five millimeter hook with this yarn. So I would recommend that you use something that's kind of in this combination, you know, sort of similar. This is designed as a chunkier knit sort of project. This one here is one I've made previously with a similar weight yarn. Um, I love a neutral chunky knit, so I'm going for this color today. And if you, like I said, if you can find this sort of combination, you're going to be close in sizing to what I get. Now, I know that not everyone loves that chunky look and you can make this with a finer weight yarn. I'm going to explain that to you a little bit further on, um, just so you've got the context of the sizing. There's a kind of an exact number of, because of the repeat, there's a kind of an exact number of rows that you need and or there's only a few options with the number of rows that you need for this neckband. And again, I'll explain that to you in the context as we move through. It's a little bit confusing now, but if you can find that that sort of combination, then, you know, it'll it'll work out pretty well for most standard cat sizes. Uh, you'll need some scissors to snip your ends, a darning needle to weave in your ends and finish your project, and a tape measure to have an idea of your cat's neck circumference. Now, you don't need an exact measurement for this um, for this project. You just need to be able to slip it over your cat's head and have it to the look that you want, whether you want it a little bit um, more fitted or you want it a bit more slouchy. And again, you're a little bit restricted because of the repeat pattern in this project of you know how many rows you can do. But this will suit... Um, and it can be adjusted, but this will suit most standard cat sizes. I've included a guide to standard cat sizes in the description box below, so you can refer to that if you need to. Okay, so to make this uh, neck warmer, you'll need to know how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to half double crochet, half double crochet in the back loop only to create this ridge or this ribbing effect around the neckband. You'll then know how, need to know how to slip stitch to join the ends of your neckband together. And from there we'll move on to this area of the neck warmer which has this repeat pattern. And in this repeat pattern you'll only need to know how to double crochet. And that create we're cre creating these fans here that give this nice scalloped look at the bottom. And then in the center, there's just, on these, these center points, there's double crochet with increases as we move out. So it is beginner friendly. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so get started with a slip knot onto your hook. And just a reminder, I don't run through these basic techniques in any great detail. So if you need to brush up before beginning this tutorial, please do. And now we're going to create a chain and the chain will correspond to the width that you want for your neck band. Okay, so here mine is about three centimeters wide. You could make it wider if you wanted to and make it a rollover neck band. You could make it thinner if you wanted to. It's, it's entirely up to you. This, this doesn't matter as far as sizing goes. It's, it's entirely a creative decision. I'm going to make it similar to what I made it here. It sits really nicely on Melba at this three centimeter width. So I'm going to chain five, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to locate the second chain from the hook and I'm going to double, oh sorry, half double crochet into that second chain from the hook. And then I'm going to half double crochet in the remaining three stitches, let me just get a bit more yarn, in the remaining three chains to the end of the row. Okay, so each of my rows will have four stitches. Okay, and you've got your, you've got your number. Okay, so it doesn't matter how wide you make this. 
it's entirely up to you. So chain one, moving on to row two. Now each row in the neckband will be the same as this row two. So half double crochet in that first stitch. And then we're going to work into the back loop only of these middle two stitches. And yours, you might have a different number of stitches in the middle here. But however many stitches you've got in the middle, you're going to work a half double crochet in the back loop only. Now, just to go back a little, each stitch has this V. And for this ribbing, you just work into the back loop. Okay, and it gives that, that ribbed effect to the neckband. So I've got two stitches that I'll work into the back loop only and then on this last stitch I'll work into both loops. Now with this last stitch sometimes you need to sort of turn it towards you to make sure that you find that last stitch. Work into both loops of that last stitch. And the first and last stitches will have both will work into both loops in each row and the middle stitches will work into the back loop only. So from here on out, you're just going to repeat this row two. So let's just do it one more time together. So working into both loops of the first stitch, then into the back loop only of the next and any that are in the center, back loop only, and then into both loops of the last stitch. And that just gives, working into the both loops of first and last stitches just gives that the edge a little bit more structure, okay? Now here's where I'll talk to you about the sizing. So for this repeat pattern in this bottom area here, you'll need, you'll need a multiple of six, but not only that, you'll need a multiple of six that's an odd number. So for this one, I, use, I used a multiple of six, which was 30, and it was dividing, you know, six into 30 is five. So five is my odd number. So with this pattern, you can either do a multiple of six, which is three, so six threes are 18, or a multiple of six that is seven, so six sevens are 42. Now, for most cats, you won't be working outside of those numbers, but for this repeat pattern, you'll need to either have 18 rows in your neckband, 30 rows, or 42 rows. Now, that's how you can use a finer weight yarn. So if you're using a fine weight yarn, you could do 42 rows, and that will give you a ballpark of your cat's neck size. Like I said, um, it's a little bit tricky in the sizing, and you, you don't have to get the sizing exact in this one, okay? So check out where your cat sits. So, I mean, if you've got a really large cat with a really large head, you might want to, you know, go for the 42 rows. But for most cats, that's going to be too large if you're using a chunky weight yarn, okay? So most cats will fit in this sizing, using a chunky weight yarn around a 5 millimeter crochet hook, if your cat is a little bit bigger than Melba, which who has a twenty about a twenty four centimeter neck circumference, you could use a larger hook size, for example. So a lot of the adjusting of sizing is using a different hook size and a different yarn size. Okay. Now I hope that all makes sense. I know that it's a little bit confusing, but your neck band will be either eighteen, thirty, or forty two rows, depending on the sizing of your cat depending on the yarn you're using and the hook you're using. Okay, so I'm going to go for the 30 rows again and I will meet you. So I'm just going to work, continue working that row two until I get to my 30 rows. Now once again, I know that's a little bit restrictive and I'm um, sorry if it's um, you know, it's hopefully it's clear, but it's to accommodate that repeat pattern down in this area here, it has to be an odd number multiple of six, okay, to get this, this pattern nice and even. Okay, so move along, I'm going to go to 30 rows, and I'll meet you when you get to the number of rows that you need. Okay, just as I move through my working in my 
neckband here. I just want to reiterate to you the number of rows. So if you are using a like much bulkier weight yarn than mine or your cat is you know a really little cat you're making this for a kitten then you can go to 18 rows so six threes are 18 multiples of six in an odd number 18. If you've got a sort of you know what I would call a standard sized cat you know in the domestic short hair realm um, you know not not any of the larger breeds you would and you're using a chunky yarn like I am you would go for 30 rows okay and then if you have you want to go for a finer look you don't like this chunky look but you want you know you like the you like the pattern you want to go for a, a finer weight yarn you'll have to use a much finer weight yarn and go to 42 rows so six sevens 42 okay so this like I said before that's how you can adjust the sizing in this in this pattern by changing your hook size changing your yarn and using one of those three multiples of six around the neck band okay so yeah once again I'm really hoping that that is clear and that you can work out the sizing that you will need for your particular situation. And you can see here now the the, the um, ribbing is coming out really nicely. Like I said, I love these neutral sort of chunky knits. So that's why I went with this. I went with this pattern to get something that's kind of that cool chunky knit look. So um, yeah, I'm going to continue on until I get to my 30 rows, my six six multiple of six in an odd number five and get to my 30 rows and I'll meet you there now if you've lost count of your rows just I mean it's pretty obvious anyway but just so how you count your rows in this one is you just count the the ridges and furrows so in this I've got one two three four five six seven so you just count ridge furrow ridge furrow Okay, so I've got my 30 rows there. Now, the other thing I just thought of, and at the risk of adding more complications to this, but I actually just thought about this while I was moving along. If you're really having trouble sizing, um, you know, sizing this with the half double crochet, and 30 rows of half double crochet is too much, what you could do is just use single crochet ribbing. So it's the same thing, you'd just use a single crochet into the back loop and single crochets on the on the edges so I just thought about that now um, yeah like I said it might add another variable in there that's more confusing if it's more confusing just ignore that otherwise if like I said if you with this 30 you're finding that it's just a little bit too big then you you know you you could go to the single crochet ribbing and uh, decrease the size of it that way and still have your 30 rows Okay, so moving on to the moving on to joining this neckband. So chain one, I've already chained one there, and then we're going to join our neckband edges together. So taking the back loop of and apologies for that sun that's coming in there. Um, the taking the back loop of the first stitch and then the other chain of the next one I'm just going to slip stitch to join these together so really simple so just take that what I recommend that you do is you just take the back loop of the stitch and then work through to the chain okay and you join you join your your two ends together like that so you've got your neck loop okay so now what you'll have to do is you want to turn this inside out okay so you want to be working with it with now this edge facing you so that's your this is your right side now okay so the inside is where you've, you can see that join really prominently you want to turn it inside out and have that 
the outside of the join facing you. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the repeat pattern. Now you can work in your tail end here or you can just weave it in later. It's up to you. I'm going to I'm going to weave it in later because this pattern is quite open. So it's uh, it's not as easy to work work in. Let's just get that tail out of the way now. Okay, so chain 3 2 and 3. Now that always counts as a double crochet. It always counts as a stitch from here on out, okay? So you've got your chain 3, which is your first double crochet. And that's in row 1 here, which is even with your even with your your join. Now you're going to count three rows. So so that's your first row. The next one is this one here. Next one, next this one here, and your third one is here. So we're going to do our first of our fan repeat here. So what I recommend that you do is you don't work right into the edge. You work into one of the stitches. Okay. So do a double crochet and then a, another one. All into that same top of row and then another one. Chain three. And then do three more chains, uh, three more, sorry, double crochets into that same space. So you've got this fan, fan pattern that creates the scallops. Okay, you can see that, see that coming in there. So you've got your first double crochet here, and then you've got your, your first fan. Now you're going to count three rows again, so one, two, and three into that third one just work a double crochet so one double crochet okay then count three again see and actually just to go back see you can see I've worked it actually into the stitch in the row not right at the top which is what I recommend that you do don't work it right into the top of the row work it sort of just down a little bit and then one two three so our next set of fans is coming in here one and two and three chain three so it's two sets of three double crochets separated by a chain three one and two and three okay moving on to the next one two three and then placing just a double crochet in that next. Okay, so you can see the pattern happening here. Okay, so we're going to just continue working that around. So let's do one more together. One, two, three. Working your set of three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. Chain three and then three double crochets, two and three, and then count three, one, two, three, and you've got your single double crochet in there. So continue around until you get to the end of your round here. And we're just going to slip stitch into this one to join. And of course, you're going to finish with a fan. Okay? You're going to finish with a fan, fan, little fan section. You're going to finish with this, one of these. And then we're going to slip stitch in here. But I'll meet you once I've got round to my final fan. Okay, so I've just finished my final fan there. And this is why that multiples, that odd multiples of um, of six matters because you want to finish on a fan and then be able to slip stitch into this chain at the beginning which counts as one of your double crochets and then you've got that exact repeating pattern okay so that's round one round two we're going to bring in an increase so chain your three, which counts as one of your double crochets. And then to increase here, we're going to add another double crochet just below that chain. 
Okay, so we've got two double crochets at the beginning there. Then we're going to move on to working into this chain space. So we're going to just repeat this fan in that chain space. So three double crochets. Two and three. Chain three. And then three more double crochets. And once again, I apologize for all the shadows in this video this morning. I'm filming in the morning, and which I usually film in the afternoon, but um, I'm filming at a slightly different time today. And there's a few more shadows coming into my into my uh, into my screen, so I apologize for that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next cro double crochet here. So we've got that double crochet post there. So we're going to work. To make our increase, we're going to work two double crochets into that double crochet from the previous row. Okay, so we've got two double crochets of fan worked into the chain three space, two double crochets, and then of course we're going to move on to the next fan and work in the next chain space, work the next fan. So three double crochets chain two, or chain three, big your pardon, and then three double crochets, one, two, and three. So you can see we're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around. So we're at our next double crochet here, so of course that's two double crochets into that, into that stitch. So continue working your way around, just repeating that pattern, and I'll meet you when I get to the end of my round. Okay, so I'm at the end of my second round here, and then I'm just going to slip stitch into that, the top of that chain at the beginning, and there's my round two. So depending on the exact yarn you're using, you can stop here, um, or you can come with me for a, another round. Okay. So, like I did on that on the cream one. So, one, two, three chains to start. And now we're going to place, this time we're going to increase to four. So, in each double crochet, we're placing two double crochets. So, just as before, but because we've got two double crochets this time, we're, we'll end up with four. And then the same thing with the fans, you were just working into that chain three space. Two and three. Chain three. And then working back into that chain space. So this yarn that I'm using is slightly more chunky than the one I used previously. So it's going to be a slightly bigger neck warmer, but that's going to be kind of cool. So then moving on to your area of double crochets, you'll place two double crochets in each of those double crochets. Now if your cat is a really, really fine boned cat, you don't have to increase this quickly. So what you could do, and this is where, you know, you've got to work out your sizing for your cat um, even further. You can, you know, make it even more nuanced. If increasing here, if your cat is really fine boned and, the, you know, quite narrow across the chest, you could just increase, you know, two in, two in one stitch and one in the other. You don't have to, you don't have to increase as rapidly as this. Okay, you could, yeah, like I said, you could end up with just three in this area. And so you can adjust your increases according to your cat sizing. Okay, so just, you know, never be scared to kind of work out what works for you with regards to sizing. Obviously, every cat is slightly different in proportion and the way that you crochet is slightly different. So work out, you know, what works for you. Keep trying it on your cat and make sure that, um, you know, you've got the fit where you want it to be. And you can adjust those increases accordingly.
okay so I'm going to go and continue round. This is going to be my final round for this neck warmer. If you're using a fine weight yarn, you could continue for another round or two. And you would adjust your increases depending on the sizing of your cat. So if you're just going in the, in the um, you know, you, you probably, if you go further than this, you probably won't want to double like we have been here. So what you could do, for example, if you're going further in the rounds, you could put one double crochet in the first, you could double up here in the center two, and then put one double crochet in the second. So you're increasing from four to six for the next round. So again, that's, you know, that's for you to play around with. But for now, I'm just going to finish off this third round with my increases. And you'll finish off yours. And then you'll decide if you want to go for more rounds. That's entirely up to you. You can make it a slightly longer neck warmer. But you just, just, you know, bear in mind you don't want to restrict the front legs at all. And, uh, yeah. So you work out, you know, work, work around for this last round, this third round. And decide, you know, you, then you'll decide whether you, where you want to go, whether you want to go further. I'm going to finish at the end of this round. So I'll meet you at the end of this round. So I'm just going to slip stitch once again into the top of that chain to join my round. Oops. Let's do that again. Okay. So there I've got my neck warmer as long as I want it to be. And like I said, continue on if you want to. You don't have to stick to my, you know, to my patterns. You you adjust it according to, you know, and according to what works with you with regards to increases and number of rounds. So I'm going to finish off here. So I'm just going to yarn over and pull through. And once again, I'm really sorry for all these shadows today. I'm going to try and fill them in with the editing, but, you know. I'm not an expert editor, so I'll uh, I'll do what I can. Now, hopefully, it's not too distracting with all these shadows. So I'm sorry about the light today. Okay, so you're just going to weave in your ends to finish this off, and that's basically the end of the project. So I'm going to assume that you you know you pretty much know how to weave in an end, but I'm going to just weave it into the back here. To finish off so you can see that this is a really quick quick project to work up it's kind of it's kind of pretty I like the scalloped effect I'm just going to weave this down weaving into double crochets is super easy just weave down there and then I'm just going to come come back so I double back just to make sure that it's nice and secure but just always making sure you never double back exactly where you've come from or you'll unravel and don't pull too tight is the other thing just to keep in mind when you're weaving in your ends because you can misshape your work I'm just going to come in there and then I will snip off my end and I'm going to weave in my second end let's just tuck that in there for now but there you have your neck warmer so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I think this one is super cute. I hope the sizing hasn't confused you too much. If you've got any questions, please include them in the uh, comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, it's always a little bit tricky to answer specific questions because I, you know, I don't, I'm not with your cat and, and uh, you know, it, it sometimes can be a little bit tricky to answer specific questions, but I'll do my best. So please put those down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to catch you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Oh, <laughs> before we go, I would love it if you send, a lo send along your photos to, um, you know, of your cat wearing his or her crochet creations. So you can send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or at catventurous.crochet. You can tag us on social media. So uh, yes, now it's goodbye. Thanks very much. Bye.
Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial for our uh... Hi everyone, it's Charlotte in Melba here. Thank you for joining. Hi everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for <laughs> this cat neck warmer. It's very windy here today and Melba is skitterish, skittish. Skitterish. Skitterish. <laughs> you think she looks angry? Oh my god, Melba, you're hilarious. 